Create Extruded Features. In this video, we'll create an extruded body, we'll start an extrude from a plane, and start an extrude from a face. For this video, we're going to carry on with our gear reduction housing solids, but first I want to take a look at the bearings that are going to be used in our gear assemblies. Right now we have three separate McMaster car part numbers that we're going to be using that's based on our spec sheet. We have our bearing, that's a 5972K276. This bearing, you can see, has a couple values that are going to be important to us. It has a 12 millimeter inside diameter, and it has a 21 millimeter outside diameter. Now, this is a rather large bearing, and this one is going to be going inside of the larger gears. Remember that we do need a 10 millimeter shaft coming out of the housing. When we're using a bearing that has a 12 millimeter inside diameter, that allows us to create a shaft with a step in it that gives us a 10 millimeter, either a threaded portion or a spline, and something that we can still manufacture. Note that the bearing width in this case is five millimeters. If we move on to the next bearing, we're taking a look at a 5972K286. This one here has a 10 millimeter inside diameter, and it has a 22 millimeter outside diameter with a thickness of six millimeters. Once again, this is a bearing that's going to be used in certain areas of our design. Remember, we do need that 10 millimeters, so we have one of these bearings that'll be going in our larger drive gear, and then we have one that'll be nested inside of our driven gear. These will be used to ensure that the shafts are concentric and they allow for us to have an input and an output shaft that is along the same axis. And lastly, for our idle gears, we have the 5905K73. This is a needle bearing setup that has an eight millimeter shaft, an eight millimeter thickness, and a 12 millimeter outside diameter. These are gonna be the bearings that are gonna go inside of the idle gears, and then the longer idle gear that's 21 millimeters long will have one on each end. So these are the three bearings that we're gonna be using inside of our gears. So this helps us better understand the size constraints that we're working with. Now let's hop into Fusion 360. In Fusion 360, we're carrying on with our gear reduction housing solids. To get started, I do wanna mention that we are going to be creating bodies and we'll work on converting them to components later. There are different ideas or different workflows that we can follow when we're designing new components. Because we're just beginning to learn about creating sketches and creating bodies, we're going to be taking the approach of creating these initial features and using the body method. There are some nuances that we'll talk about later on in different videos where we talk about the creation of components. If you're more familiar with Fusion 360 and you want to create these as components now, that's perfectly fine. You can do so by going to assemble and creating a new component or by using the new component option when we create our first extrude. First, let's get started by selecting extrude. I wanna select all of the various closed regions here. We're gonna worry about removing material later, so I'll do a box select. I'm gonna begin dragging this back to start creating our solid body. However, we did all the work to set up our planes for the different areas of our housing. So instead of setting the extent to distance, I'm going to use two object and I'm going to select my housing back. This is creating a new body and we'll say OK. It automatically makes the sketch visibility turn off, but we can always bring it back whenever we need to create another extrude. Extrudes can start based on a sketch, but we can also use the housing if we wish. So I'm going to select this face. I'm going to go to extrude. And instead of distance, once again, I'm gonna to go to object, but I wanna select my mid plane. So we'll go to housing mid, noting that it is automatically adding it to the rest of the housing. When I do this, we need to be mindful of whether or not we do wanna join it or if we wanna create a new body. The nuance here is whether or not we're creating a single area for these gears to be, or if we're gonna be adding additional material to the front of it. What I wanna do at this point is join them together. So I'm gonna use the join option and say, okay. Because these are parametric features, meaning there are parameters that control them on the back end. If I made a mistake and decided that was really supposed to be another portion of a housing, 
I can always go back and edit those features by double clicking or right clicking on them in the timeline. I can change this from join to new body. However, the only nuance here that's important is that the new component option does not appear. Once we've done a join, a cut, or an intersect, we can only go back and change it to a new body and not a new component. Now that we've added that new section, let's go back to our sketches and bring back our housing layout sketch. At this point, we need to add some additional material to the front. We're gonna do this by once again, creating an extrude. Notice when we try to select the sketch, it's actually selecting the front face of this body. We can change our selection priority by going up to our selection priority or selection filters, or we can simply hold down the left mouse button, which will bring up a selection dialog, allowing us to select the different profiles. You can also temporarily go into your bodies folder and hide body too to make the selection process easier. Sometimes it's also easier if we hide the various planes as they could potentially get in the way. Any of these options are fine and it really depends on what your workflow is and what you're comfortable with. For this example, since most people will be doing this process manually, let's go ahead and manually select all the different areas. And once we've done that, we can bring back the construction planes. From here, we're gonna extrude this a distance to object. We wanna select that housing front. This is going to join with the other body, body two, and we wanna make sure that we set this to join and we hide body one. If we hide body one, it's only going to join with the existing body, in this case, body two, that it's currently intersecting with. So now we have two bodies. We have body one, which is our back, and body two, which is the front. We are gonna have some additional parts of this. We're gonna have some covers and some different areas where we need to make sure that we have the idler gears and the driven gear in this front section, and the larger gear is going to be inside this back section. We need some openings for the input and output shaft, as well as the bearings that are gonna support those. Before we create any other geometry, let's make sure we do a quick save and then we can bring back our housing layout sketch. Now we wanna actually remove a bit more material from the inside of this housing. Again, removing some material, we're gonna start by creating a new sketch on this front face by selecting Create Sketch. We then can project some of the geometry and we can also create some new geometry. I'm gonna project the smaller circle from our original housing layout sketch by hitting P on the keyboard. I'm also gonna bring in the lines and the larger circle and then say okay and hide my housing layout sketch. We can't simply take this and create an offset, but what we can do is we can use some modify tools to trim away some of this existing geometry. Notice that when we select this, it's not allowing us to completely get rid of it, but if we hit escape and we convert each of these to construction, this will allow us to create a new sketch element, in this case, a center diameter circle, that matches exactly the position of the original. And now we can use our trim to get rid of those sections. We're getting a warning that's telling us that some of the constraints were removed, but you'll note that the lines and the arcs are still fully defined. Now we can use offset. And if we turn off chain selection, we can manually work our way around, including those projected entities. We begin dragging this in. We can go minus, and this is gonna be our housing wall thickness. When we use our housing wall thickness and say, okay, we've now created an offset sketch. We're gonna finish the sketch and use extrude on that intersection. And we're gonna begin dragging this back and it's gonna go up to a specific object, in this case, housing mid, we can select objects to cut, but note it's only trying to cut through body two, and we can say okay. Now we were able to remove some material that gives us enough room to start placing the gears in the front section of our housing. Let's put this back in a home view and quickly go into our change parameters list and take a look at some of the parameters and how they'll affect our design. I'm gonna pull this over to the upper right-hand side, and I wanna take a look at this housing thickness value of three millimeters. If I change this to a larger value, for example, six millimeters, not only does it affect the thickness of the extrude we just created, but it also affects the position of other areas inside of our object. And this is because we use that gear thickness to create some additional functions. 
If we increase it to 10 millimeters, you can see the drastic effect it's having on the back of the housing as well as the thickness of this wall. We're going to reset this to 3 millimeters as that's the value that we want to use. And for right now, let's make a save before moving on.